Welcome to day five of the Vid21 conference. It's hard to believe we are Friday in Australia already. Um, if you are joining for the first Vid21 session, welcome. If you are returning back, um, it's great to have you back. It's uh, so good to see familiar names popping up into the waiting room. I'm always excited to see good people popping up, which is fantastic. Uh, we are in for a bit of a treat this morning in Kimberly Weefling, I've met, I actually saw her speak uh, live on stage when that was a thing, pre-COVID. I saw her speak in Melbourne. There were rubber chickens, there was activities. She got us talking to people. She got us, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun. Um, she spoke last year um, and that was a lot of fun. And I'm really thrilled that she's come back this year to speak um, as well. If you haven't come across her, um, she is the founder of Weefling Consulting a Silicon Valley based global consultancy. She's a, physis a physicist by education. So that means she is as smart as she looks. And um, she recognized a long time ago that the crucial role of human skills, what her engineering friends some call, sometimes called the touchy feely crap was key to everything that we try and do in the world. She's worked with people from over 50 different countries. Her book, Scrappy Project Management, has got her invited to speak to audiences globally. She works with Valley colleagues at the Sil Silicon Valley Alliances, and she's never boring. Her keynotes are incredible. Her workshops are more workshops. So hold on to your seats, get ready for some positive change. And I'm just gonna bring you up and your rubber chicken. Like, I love that the rubber chicken's back, Kimberly. This is just, you can't have a keynote without a rubber chicken these days. So uh, thank you so much, Kimberly. He's big, he's bigger than ever. He's up for the worldwide pandemic of dysfunctional organizations and disengaged employees. So thank you, Julia. And I'm here with my colleague, Yvonne Burton. Take a bow, Yvonne. Thank you for your support. You never want to fly solo with these video engagements. All right, let's start off today. It's remote teams that rock. And we're not going to tell you about it. We're going to do it because talking about it is like talking about losing weight. It doesn't make progress. So let's stand up. Even if you're watching this on video, I'll be watching you. I can feel your participation. We're gonna do a little stretch to show you that remote Teams That Rock does not have to be sitting on your butt all day. So let's do the YWLT stretch. Do it with me, people, make a Y. Make sure that you know why. Why are your teams working together? They need a purpose beyond profit, a mission that matters. W, what? What exactly is the goal? What is the mission? We can't run a race without a finish line. L, leadership, that's what's required. There's a whole bunch of things going wrong in teams all over the world, not only virtual teams, and it's a leadership problem. T, T, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Somebody told me there's no I in team, but there is an I in win. So let's do it really fast again. Y, W, L, T. Yes, thank you so much. So you get your team started with something physical. And it doesn't only have to be that. There's other physical things you can do. But I'll tell you what's really cool. If you do that, the first time you meet with your team and you say, Hey, next week, Nosh, it's your turn to bring the icebreaker or warm-up exercise. And you get other people on your team. Share power, share control. Now, there's also no excuse for showing up looking boring. Get yourself some hats, people. They're called props. Get yourself a nice feather boa. Thanks for your support, Yvonne. And I'm saying these, these are tax-deductible business expenses now. All right, how fun is that? And don't limit it. Yeah, you got wonderful eyeglasses that you can get. Yes, everything can be bought on Amazon. You can even get glasses that express things beyond words. Like, no, no, I don't want to be seeing this. Or I love the thumbs up, the thumbs up. 
Because I hate it when I ask, is everybody okay with this? And people just look at you like this. And I worry that they've replaced themselves with a picture of themselves in their office. Now, I haven't yet found thumbs down glasses, but you can just turn them over if you really need the thumbs down. Of course, you can always use the reactions panel. So the costumes are important. Now, I am on a mission to wipe out the dysfunctional organizations and disengaged employees on this planet. I'm just going to show you some of the data because I am a physicist and I'll just show a couple of slides. I don't want to make a big deal of the slides because that's like reading a book about exercise, right? But typical teams, over 80% of teams failed to reach their goals. A third of them said that they were unsuccessful in general. And the number one reason was they failed to build trusting relationships. I mean, how crazy is that? Failed to build trusting relationships? Number two, communication barriers, because um, not only language, not only culture, but they didn't have ways to solve problems and make decisions together. Hey, we can jump on a Google sheet. We can generate a bunch of ideas. We can multi-vote. We can do that in a matter of minutes now. Third reason was the individual and team goals weren't aligned. And the fourth reason was the vision and the goals were just not clear. Now look at this. Okay, the top reasons for failure, failing to build trust, can't overcome communication barriers, goals of the individuals and teams were not aligned and the goals were unclear. Whose job is that? Just shout it out so I can hear you even if it's on the recording. Whose job is it to build trust? Make sure goals are clear, align priorities. Yes, yes, it's our job. It's a leadership job. Me, point to yourself. Look in the mirror, people. This is a failure of leadership. And so there's, it doesn't have to be boring, all right? Like I said, now, how do you build this kind of a team? You got to start by building trust. Guess what? A lot of people are isolated, they're lonely these days, but big, strong men and women professionals don't go to their manager and say, I'm lonely, I'm isolated, I'm feeling depressed. But they are, because they tell me. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what you can do to engage people and connect to purpose and get them to build psychological safety with each other that goes beyond the professional, hello, how are you, fine, dandy, and you, mm -hmm. no. So let's do a little bit of check-ins. When you first start a meeting, realize people might have a dog barking in the background. Their kids are going to school at home. They're having a COVID divorce because they can no longer stand hanging out with their spouse in the same house day after day. So here's one thing I like to do. I say, get yourself a piece of paper and a pen. Let's do a quick check-in. Let's draw how we feel. So just take 20 seconds to draw how are you feeling. Now this gets at something beyond words. Draw how you feel, go ahead, get that paper. I know you're doing it, I can sense it through the cosmic airwaves, thank you. There you go, Nosh. Hold it up to the camera. Oh yeah, there you go. So you get everybody to draw how they feel and thank you, oh, Julia's happy. One, once in a while you're gonna see somebody happy, right? But this is a way, thank you. This is a way you can get people to express what's difficult to say in words. And then after you do this little check-in, if it's a small group, just go around and say, all right, what's up with that picture? If it's a large group, go into breakout rooms and just take a little time to check in. Now, another really powerful check-in is to say, hey, guys, go around and grab something from your house and bring something that's meaningful to show it to the camera. We want to get to know each other as human beings. That's how you build trust. That's how you build relationships that can help the impossible become possible. So go ahead and grab something that mean, that's meaningful in your office. Here's something that I brought. This is a picture of my grandmother and my mother when they were much younger. What do you got there, Julia? You got a very healthy looking glass bottle. Ah, oh, Stanford Business. What a great idea. Yvonne, what are you showing us? Uh, Oh, beautiful. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. My wonderful little carved bird that my sister gave me. Ooh. And does anyone else have anything that they want to show that is not going to make this into a Zoom bombing event? Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Nosh, 
Come on, Nosh, what do you got there? Ah, oh, head scratcher, love it. And so you get a chance just through these little check-ins to get to know each other more as human beings, to see what's in the office space. Some people even do what they call backstage tour and say, hey, this week, let's have Nosh carry the camera all around the house and just give us a little tour of his house. It's amazing how you can feel more connected to people when you know a little bit more about them. Remember, the number one reason that global teams fail, and I'm talking about global teams being virtual teams, they fail to build trust. And how do you build trust? You get to know each other as human beings. You got to build trust by sharing something personal, not just professional. Let me just go from check-ins to brain openers. Now, everybody try this. Brain opener is, okay, let's get our brains working. We've been sitting there checking email relentlessly for hours or days or weeks. Let's get our brains open and creative so we can work together. So you get up. Again, I really love to get people out of their chairs. And you go and wander around your room, wherever you are, pointing at things, pointing at things, calling it something different. Like, point at the koosh ball, call it a cucumber. Point at these ears and call it a crescent wrench. Point at these and call it a bathtub. All right, try it, you think it's easy? You gotta try it, it's gonna stretch your brain. So let's go for 20 seconds, wander around, point at things, call it what it's not. Do it out loud. Cucumber, uh, gasoline power turtle neck sweater. Oh, this is okay. Okay, so I think you can get a little bit of a feeling just from that short experiment how extremely hard it is. Our brains need help. Do you know that that children, NASA tested children that were five years old and they find scored on the creativity test. By the time we get to be adults, we're scoring like 2%. We can't even point at something and call it something different without our brain freaking out. So again, you find a little brain opener like that, something that engages and connects people's brains in different ways and gets them involved in your team rather than secretly checking email or playing their slot machine game on their cell phone. All right, now the cool thing is also shared power, shared control. You don't have to bring the brain opening exercise every week. We've been doing a group, Yvonne and I, we've been doing something for the last 46 weeks. Every week, somebody else volunteers to bring the brain opening exercise. And in doing that, you get your whole team engaged and connected, and you'll be amazed. These people are gonna bring interesting things to the team that are fun and give you insights into their lives, into their worlds. And you don't have to be the one always making up these games or finding them. For example, we worked with one group of people from Asia, including Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India. And one of the Indian guys brought the brain opening exercise. He had us do some kind of breathing exercise that we never would have done before. So it was like yogic breathing. So you're gonna learn about each other and you're gonna have some fun together. Now, why have fun? Do we really need to have fun, Kimberly? Is it required? Well, I don't like to have fun, but according to the research, if you are enjoying and having fun together, your brain is 300 to 400% more creative. So we have to have fun. It's proven by the research. Now, if you wanna go a little deeper and have something that's really gonna connect people, again, remember, engage people, connect to purpose, engage and connect. That's the game here. I suggest doing something that's really going to build trust. And that is doing what we call a life journey exercise. Now, the simple life journey exercise is just to have people get into groups of two or three and tell their story. So here's what you say. Tell me your life story. Start at birth. Give me the two or three minute version. Now this is called Life Journey, and it's one of the main exercises in Patrick Lencioni's book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Now, how many people have read or heard of The Five Dysfunctions of a Team? More importantly, how many people are surprised there are only five dysfunctions? <laughs> of course, there's way more dysfunctions than that. But I have created a Google document, and I'm gonna show this to you 
you can get a team of 10, 20, 30, 100 people to go through this exercise extremely quickly. And so I created a Google document and said, hey, here's how you draw your life journey. Don't just talk about it. You draw it and you can use a Google slide. You can use the scribble tool and you can talk about I was born. I had kind of a nice childhood, but my dad was sort of a psychopath. I left home, joined the military. I didn't really like it. I got married and divorced, married, divorced, married again. It's kind of working out. So everybody can do this simultaneously. Look at this. If you create a slide ready, you can have rooms that you can put three or four people in. You can have a hundred and some people doing this all at the same time, sharing with each other. All right. So you got to be prepared in advance to have some tools that will support this but you can literally do massively parallel getting to know each other. And you can make the life journey lines, you can mix the rooms up, or you could even feature one person every time you have a meeting speaking about their life journey. Now, what is the cool thing that happens when somebody shares their life journey? As soon as you spend three minutes listening to someone else's story, can you imagine what they find? Like 50 people draw their life journey and they're all looking at them. They're going, hey, wow, all of us have had ups and downs. I'm just going to show you because I have some examples from other groups that we've done. Here's a whole bunch of different people that have drawn their life journey. What do you notice? Everyone says, hey, I'm not the only one that has had ups and downs. Everybody's had some tough times. And what you'll notice were a lot of these things, they're sloping up and to the right. What is that? That's called positivity bias. It's also called hope. Hope. Human brains are wired to have hope. So when you see that and you share that, it's very powerful to realize we have this illusion that things are somehow getting better. Now, I don't know if it's really getting better or not, but if you don't have hope, what else matters? And the final thing we find from these life journey lines, if I listen to your story for three minutes, I guarantee you we're going to find something we have in common. Again, this is to build relationships, build trust, and create psychological safety, which is the foundation of a true team. There's a huge difference between a group of people working together and a real team. And that's what we're aiming for. So brain openers, don't just jump into the meeting and looking at the status reports and action items. Do your icebreakers, wear your props, do some check-ins, share how people are feeling, clear the emotional air, and do something that connects people and opens their brains. Now, if you get that far, now you're going to say, wow, we really need to figure out how we're going to work together as a team. So I suggest that you negotiate for every team, whether it's virtual or live, what I call working together agreements. Sometimes people call it ground rules. It's how are we going to treat each other? What are the practices that we're going to use so that we can work together as a real team? Now, one way to do that is to ask people, what should our working together agreements be? But human brains are so much happier going to the dark side. So what I like to do is get a little Google sheet and say, hey, let's brainstorm all the things that we could personally do that would make our work together a complete waste of time and totally destroy any chance of us working as a team. Oh, I should be breathing like, Luke, Luke, I am your father. So go to the dark side. There's cookies there. It's fun. Again, brainstorm all of the things you could personally do. Like Yvonne, give us an example of what you could do to make sure that our work together is a total waste of time and completely destroys any chance of trust. Uh, what did you say? Oh, see what I mean? She wasn't listening. Look at she's distracted playing with her phone. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so you get the idea. So you get personal because one of the things I found is when things go wrong in teams, no one feels responsible, people. This is my chicken. I carry him everywhere. He's the travel size. This big guy, he's just got to stay at home. Now, watch what happens. Watch what happens. I let this, 
I, what happened to the chicken? He dropped. Why did he drop? What caused it? All over the world, people say gravity. Oh, it's gravity, Kimberly. It's not my fault. He just fell because of gravity. But then I say, is there anything else? Yes, I released him. So as long as people don't feel responsible for the dysfunctional, toxic things they're experiencing, they won't feel responsible for changing it. So what we want to do is make it personal. How am I contributing to the things that I don't like about our working together arrangement? And how can I contribute to making it better? Let's keep it personal because all over the world, when I talk to employees, they always say, oh yeah, Kimberly, I, I do want to improve things, but you know, it's really our managers that are dysfunctional. You should help them change. Then I talk to the managers and they're like, yeah, 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 well, you're right, Kimberly, but you know, it's really the executives that are the problem. Then I talk to the executives and they're whispering and looking around and saying, uh, yeah, it's our president. That, the president's the real problem. And then the president blames the CEO. The CEO blames the chairman. The chairman blames the market, the competitors, and everything else. So no one's responsible. No one can fix it. So let's keep it personal, working together agreements. And what do you do with these working together agreements? Just post them somewhere on a shared drive among millions of other files or put them in your office? Heck no. You got to have those working together agreements be addressed at every meeting. So again, Yvonne and I have been working together with a team of consultants every week since last March, and we start every meeting like that. What's our purpose? And what do we do, Yvonne, after we talk about our purpose? We speak about our working together agreements. Sometimes we just talk about it. Sometimes we type it in the chat. Sometimes we'll draw a picture of it on the whiteboard, or sometimes we'll pull up some document. But we always talk about what are our working together agreements What's our favorite one, Yvonne? No hogs, no logs. And we got that and from one of our buddies in Australia. No hogs, no logs. Don't hog the conversation. And don't just sit there like a log doing nothing. All right. So now we've got check-ins, brain openers, working together agreements. Now you're on the path to changing your team. Now, how do people feel about change? Ooh, let's just do a little experiment. Let's just... Cross your arms. There you go. That's how you always cross them the same way every time. I know, I know, me too. Now look down and cross them the other way. Ew, it feels weird. It feels different. It feels wrong, wrong. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just new. So when you get your team making some of these changes, it's gonna feel awkward. It's gonna feel different. It's gonna feel uncomfortable. So you have to see that discomfort as a sign you are making progress. So here's what I encourage. A lot of my colleagues are in Japan and I tell them, hey, when you feel uncomfortable, that is a sign that we're making progress. So please shout out, woohoo, I'm changing. I would love it right now. Even if you're watching this on the recording, I would love it if you would just take, go like this and get yourself all excited and say, woohoo. Mm -hmm. I'm changing <laughs> little test because um, I want you to prove to me you really can change. So let's just change three things about our physical appearance. Maybe you'll put something on the other arm. Maybe you'll roll up your sleeves. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll change your costume a little bit. Three things that you're going to change about your, oh yeah, love it and encourage people to practice changing themselves on a daily basis. So it gets to be kind of something we're used to. Now I'll give you the PhD in change, the test. This is the sign for peace. You make the sign for peace with your right hand. Then you make this Japanese symbol for money with your left hand. Now this is the upside down okay sign, which I refuse to use the okay sign anymore. So now we've got peace sign with one hand, Japanese symbol for money with the other. Now you're going to change it so the other hand has the peace sign and the other one, uh-huh, good. Now you change it back, uh-huh, go to the other one. There you go. And now change, change, and change as fast as you can. That's, oh yeah, just start waving at us. <laughs> but funny thing, if you do this and you do it a couple of times, 
every week for a couple of weeks. Look how fast I can do it. Your brain can change. And then you're going to be able to track your brain changing. So encourage your team to change, to experiment with change, even small things like that. And then you're going to be able to make bigger changes with greater ease. Now, now I want to go on to something that I find is really, very inspiring. And that is creating a vision for the future. So I'm going to take some time first to ask you to think about it's a year from now. What seems impossible has happened. It is amazing. Your life, your work, your family, your organization, your community has transformed in powerful ways. Jump into that future and create with me. What are you saying? Pretend we're having a party. All right. We're going to do the post pandemic party and we're just going to do a little um, party planning. And so let's just do a little demo. Maybe Yvonne and Nosh and Julia, you'll all participate with me since I see you're active here. I'm going to say a crazy idea for a party to celebrate a year from now when we're wildly successful and all of our crazy dreams have come true. And then you're going to say, sure, great idea. And then you're going to put another even crazier idea. And then we're going to go, yeah, that's awesome. Now, what do you do if you hate the idea? Just pretend, people. All right, we're just brainstorming. You didn't have to approve a budget for it. This is how we create the future with our teams, by first imagining it. Now, that yes, but instinct is really strong. And if you yes, but the ideas to death, well, let Yvonne and I will show you what it's like. Yvonne, let's yes, but the ideas to death. I'm going to have a party. We're all going to fly to Fiji. Yes, but uh, that's going to be really expensive for everybody. Oh, wait, what do you want? <laughs> all right. Why don't we all fly to somewhere closer? I don't know. Yes, but I've been closer. I've been at home for a year, Yvonne. I want to go to the moon. I want to go to Mars. How about we go under the ocean? We create a whole city under the ocean and we can have the party there. Yes, but mm, is that realistic? No. See, now I already want to hang myself, all right? So this is what <laughs> happens in so many teams as we have realistic. We have people telling us it's not feasible. We don't have the time. We don't have the budget. We don't have the resources to do it. Guess what? You don't need that to dream. The convergent part of choosing the idea and executing comes later. Live in the imagination. If you want to engage your people and connect to purpose and have remote teams that rock, they have to have a shared vision and a dream of a future that gives them hope and makes them want to jump out of bed in the morning, all right? So you got to jump into the future and create something spectacular. So I'm going to hallucinate. I'm going to pass to Yvonne. She'll pass to Julia and Nosh if you want to play along. Here we are. Oh my gosh. We are all meeting in Australia in person. I never imagined it a year ago. It's incredible. And I'm staying for three months. It's incredible. Yvonne, how about you? Oh, that's wonderful. I love it. And why don't we rent like a whole floor of a hotel and we all could stay together and do activities together and party at night together. Yes. Right? What else? Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, and, I think, and I think we could fill an entire conference room with rubber chickens and we should all do the chicken dance. <laughs> we should have chicken pies and just a whole chicken themed conference. <laughs> What else wears little animal ears or some kind of costume they so that they all know we're together? Yeah. <laughs> and onesies. Yes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So what you can do, um, what you can do with this is you get people to talk about it and make it fun so it's safe. And you're not asking them to do it. You're not making a list of action items on it, right? You're just talking. This opens up people's brains in ways that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And then the next thing you do, you get yourself a Google slide presentation and you tell them, you know what? That was beautiful. Let's make a picture of it. Let's hallucinate together just the same way we drew a picture of how we were feeling. Let's go bigger than words. Let's use visuals. 
And here's one thing that I've been doing every year for the last 20 years is having people make collages of their imagined future. So you go there and everybody together makes a collage of what this would look like in the future if anything were possible and there was no limit, no limit. And you can start with these collages, then you have them do something called news from the future headlines. So everybody writes a headline from the future that they hope they'll be able to say. And then you prepare a newscast. So then you can go ahead and create news reports from the future. And then you pull it all together and you can actually create a map of how you're gonna get there. But it starts by imagining it. If you want to create the future, you start by imagining it. So I'm going to ask you to be on the news report with me. And I am so excited to be here reporting on Julia Steele. You know, Julia has done a lot of amazing things during the past year. She pulled together a conference when things looked grim. She got a whole book published. She put together another conference that spanned weeks. And now we're here interviewing her. Julia, looking back on all of that, now that you're well beyond that, what are your thoughts? What wisdom do you have to share with others who are going through challenges, different challenges, that helped you make it through that difficult time? Just smile and smile and have fun. And if you're in any doubt, do it anyway. Just do, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> I totally loved when Julia said to me, Kimberly, there are no such thing as failures, only experiments and prototypes. Just keep growing and fail forward. All right, so now, of course, my engineering friends, when they hear this stuff, they're saying, oh, Kimberly, that's so unrealistic. I'm like, oh yeah, just like when Lord Kelvin in 1890 something, the famous physicist Lord Kelvin said, heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Oh, and then less than 10 years later, the Wright brothers had a heavier than air flying machine. And by the way, when Lord Kelvin said that heavier than air flying machines were impossible, there were birds. Birds are heavier than air for crying out loud. So I never let anybody tell me something's impossible. And by the way, let's just type in the chat. What percent of everything in the entire universe do you personally no don't be shy don't be humble just type in the chat out of everything in the entire universe that could be known what percent do you personally know let's see what kind of answers are we getting you know most people when i ask this question they say something like 0.00001% or at least less than 1% now if we know less than 1% and we hear an idea from some of our colleagues and our teammates and it sounds unrealistic. And we can't imagine immediately how to do it. Should we kill their idea? Heck no. If we can't imagine how to do it, it just means that something in the 99% that we don't know could make it possible even easy. One of my favorite quotes is, many things seem impossible until your competitor does it. Ask the people at Nokia. Nokia had 52 or 53% market share in the world. Over 50% market share in the world. You could not have convinced that leadership team that they were doing anything wrong. Seven years later, you know what? It was 3%. So we have got to be open to the possibility that things that we can't imagine now, can't imagine how to do, could be possible, maybe inevitable even easy so don't be afraid to dream big again remote teams that rock a team is a group of people who share common goals and a common dream for the future so don't leave that to chance have some fun with this even say you're hallucinating oh let's just imagine together you're not promising don't put it on their performance evaluation plan for the coming year but do invite them to dream bigger than they think is possible because what seems impossible to me, the first time I have the guts to say it, my colleagues are gonna have ideas of how to do it. And I have found this 
over and over again in conversations with thousands of people all over planet Earth that if you ask them, talk about what seems impossible, but if it were possible, would woohoo transform their team, their work, their life, their community for the better. Within a few minutes of them talking, other people listening have ideas of how to do it. They have ideas of how to do it. That's why we need a team. If we all think the same, we only need one of us. So that's what we're talking about. Just quickly, Kimberly, in chat, yeah. Joanne had a really interesting comment. Other than less than 0.0001, it says all ideas have a kernel of something possible. That's just what you, you just explained. Yeah. Well, and I will give you an example of that. Let me tell you a story of why I never kill an idea. There was a brainstorming going on, I was told, with these people who were having problems in the Arctic where the power lines were getting covered with ice and then the ice would hang on the power lines and would break the power lines. So they all got all the team and the engineers in there brainstorming, what do we do about these power lines breaking? And after many, many hours making no progress, <clears throat> one person, pretty well fed up with the whole process, said, well, there's a lot of bears up there. Why don't we put a big pot of honey at the top of the power line poles? Then the bears can crawl up to get the honey. It'll shake the poles and it'll shake the ice off of the, the wires. And the other guy goes, well, sure, but what if I'm up there putting the honey up there on top of the poles and the bear starts coming up and I'm still up there. <clears throat> and the other, another guy says, oh, don't worry. We can fly some helicopter low in over top and the downdraft from the helicopter will scare the bear down. And someone else says, oh, is the downdraft strong enough to break the ice off the power lines? Ooh, yeah. So that's how they solve the problem by flying a helicopter low over the power lines so that the downdraft pulled the ice off the lines. And they would have never got there if they didn't have this crazy idea of this bear and the honey pots. So please remember the bears and the honey pots don't kill people's ideas. <clears throat> All right, so after you get the check-ins, you've got the brain openers, you've got working together agreements, you know how to change and keep changing. By the way, how many people have still got those three changes uh, continue to change or did you already change back? Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Uh, we change, but then we change back. So got to get in the habit of changing and continue changing. So you got the future, a shared vision of the future. Now you got to figure out how are we going to achieve it? Well, once you get the future, you'll be amazed at how easy it is to think of what you should do today, this week, this month, this quarter, this year to lurch fitfully in that direction. And I say it like that because I live in Silicon Valley. All right. We do not have failures here. We have experiments and prototypes and we fail forward. So uh, we build success on a mountain of failures. So what you need to do is make it safe for your team to experiment, take necessary risks, learn from mistakes, and fail forward together in the direction of your goals and dreams. And I guarantee you, at least you'll get partial credit. That's how I got through graduate school in physics. Partial credit, I never got a perfect on any exam. Then there's the follow-up. Action items and accountability partners. So what I love to do is create thinking partners. If you've got a team of 10, 20 people, you don't really want to have them get together all the time frequently, but you might want to form thinking partner teams. That is three people working together to hold each other accountable. So maybe if your team meets once a week, they might meet in between meetings. If you meet every month, they might meet in between the monthly meetings. And what you do in your thinking partner team is say, so what'd you do? What happened? What are you going to do next? And creating these thinking partner teams is a powerful way to increase the team effectiveness, the psychological safety, to build more meaningful relationships, and to get your team to be a team that rocks. Don't believe me. Don't believe anything I say just because I'm enthusiastic, all right? Please, just try it. Try it, people. Create some thinking partner teams. And I've been doing this with one of my friends for the past couple of weeks, and it can be things that are part of the business and can also be part of self-care and health and well-being. So one of my commitments was, I'm going to play that ukulele. I'm going to play those drums at least once a week. And then my thinking partner asked me, so did you do it? 
And when you promise somebody you're going to do something, it goes from a 10% chance, if you just think, geez, I really would want to do that action item, 10% chance. If you write it down, 40% chance you'll do it. If you actually tell somebody and ask them, would you please check on me and check on my progress, it goes up to over 90% chance it's going to happen. That's according to the Association for Training and Development, some research that they did a few years back. So thinking partners, action items, accountability checkpoints, not to punish people for not doing it, but to support people for getting it done. Now at your meetings, be sure to do a checkout. Make sure that you give people a chance to stay connected emotionally. So on the checkout, all they need to do is say one breath, just like <gasps> one breath. How was this for you? What happened in this meeting that's going to stick in your head? And it's going to inspire you to go forward. I'd love to see some of that in the chat and hear anybody who would like to share what's stuck in your head from today that you're going to leave with and carry into your life. So let's see if anybody has a burning desire to say something. I'm looking at you all. Who has a burning desire to say something? I'm throwing my chicken to Julia. <laughs> I need more props in my life. I'm going to go down to the nearest dollar store I can find and buy every tacky piece of prop I can find. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I definitely would stay away from this one. This is the whole rubber. This is the chicken head. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but everything else I highly recommend. No, that was, and then here's another one. You might want to, I don't know how practical it is, but if you want to, you know, put your head inside of something that looks a lot like of a virus, you know, you might want to get something like that. I also like to get things like this. Those mm -hmm. reactions in the bottom of the zoom panel, they're just not enough for me. I like to have something a little more exciting that I can share. So you might want to get yourself some of these giant emoticons. Again, there's some that you probably will need more than others. Like I use this one a lot. This one, this one's also very helpful. Yeah, but I want to make sure that we get things done. So again, thank you, Joanne, for the reaction. I appreciate that. Engaging people, connecting to purpose. Engage people, connect to purpose. Make it fun, make it experiential, make it interactive and use all these kind of other props, activities, games, support systems that you can. Now what happens after your meeting is over? Hey, stay connected. If you want to have a remote team that rocks, you got to have something like an optional after party. Like some of the people you work with, they have their meeting every week, but at the end they say, okay, go get your favorite beer or wine or cocktail. And we're going to hang out optional another half an hour just to relax and enjoy. Or, I have been doing a virtual happy hour for my family and friends every day for the past 360 days. Okay, so a virtual happy hour, you don't have to do it every day for your team, but maybe once a week. Tell them, put that favorite beer or wine on your expense report. That's cheap. That's cheap to make the employees engaged. Another thing is uh, some of the executives I talked to said, Oh, I feel like I don't know how to connect with my people. I used to walk around the office or the factory and, and talk to them. And now I can't engage and connect to them like I used to. No, come on. You're not getting off the hook that easily. I asked them, do you eat lunch every day? Yes. Well, how about eating lunch on Zoom? I'm going to be on Zoom. I'm going to have it open. I'm going to be eating. There's no agenda. Join me if you want to eat together. So there's no excuse for not connecting with your team meaningfully. Another thing that we do because people are really tired of just sitting in front of their computer. Great. You know what I tell them? Hey, get off of the video, pick up your phone. We're going to do a distance walk and talk. So we're walking, we're talking. And by the way, when you're walking, your left and right side of your brain's working together much better. So you don't have to just sit in your chair and have meetings all day. You can all get on a conference line and you can all be walking in different places together. So let's be a little bit more creative, people. Remote teams that rock. There are things that you can do in a virtual team that you could never do live and in person. We have had situations with over 120 people all conspired to draw a landscape together in two minutes. Have them draw mountains. Have people draw an underwater world. Have them draw a face together. 
you can have everybody on a whiteboard drawing together in two minutes to create something that nobody could have done alone. Remote teams that rock, it's not rocket science. It's much harder because it involves human beings. So I'll just put my favorite glasses of the day on and I will say thank you all for being here and being playful. And Julia, thank you so much for your kind invitation. I look forward to seeing you somewhere on planet Earth real soon.